another episode of the Granny Panty Podcast where I feature adult creators or mature creators in the adult industry. Uh, my name is Ruby Lynn. I'm your host, and I would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button before you forget so you'll get notified when new episodes go live. Uh, my guest today has quite a story. I'm, I just finished reading her book, stayed up way too late last night. It is quite a story, and I'm excited to chat with her today and kind of dig a little deeper into her story. So help me welcome Jennifer Steele Mondello. Welcome. Hi. It's great to be here. So, um, wow. I have to say, I was up way too late because I couldn't put your book down. Oh. And um, I know Thank that you, you just released this book. And yeah, I would I'd love for you. In September, yeah. Yeah. And I I can't wait to dive a little deeper into your story. Um, and I think what really drew me in was because where you started is where I live, Portland, Oregon. And your oh, story wow. starts starts at a um a club that I actually frequented um in the two thousands, mid two thousands. So tell us a little bit about how you came to write your book? Um, well, I was raped by Ron Jeremy 25 years ago in, in 1997. And um, what I didn't start writing the book until the day after he got arrested, I started writing the book. And I had already been taking writing classes at Eckerd College um, at the Writers in Paradise program for about mm -hmm. six years. Um, and then when Ron got arrested and it, I, I knew that it was one of those things that was going to be on my mind for a long time while the courts were doing what they were doing. Um, so I figured I would just go through the writing process to kind of help myself. And I, and I thought, I, I know how to write a book, you know, so I'll just turn this into right. a book. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's awesome. how I started writing it was when he got arrested. And um, so the thing that really struck me about your book is the fact that you weren't um, exactly quiet about what happened to you. I mean, you were, it, you know, it seemed like you were in the beginning because of, um, the trauma and the shame, but I really commended you for being vocal about it. Yeah. How, how was the response? I told a lot of people. Um, when, yeah, you did tell a lot of people. And I think what was disappointing to me is that it just got swept under the carpet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I told um, I told agents, Damn. I told uh, certain club owners, certain um, directors who wanted me to like the, the different types of people in the business. I, I told like, and it was when they were trying to throw me in front of him, and I and I would say I can't work with this person. He raped me, and it's because I didn't right. want uh, my someone who'd rape me walking around me while I'm trying to act sexy and be a, an adult star. Right, right, and um. I know a couple of times you referenced, I mean, did he ever contact you or were you, did you ever come face to face with him and, and have him acknowledge that it even happened? No, this, it, he never acknowledged it. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, so, I mean, it's just shocking how much he got away with that just blows yeah. me away. Um, hearing all the stories, everything that came out, uh, there, there I are never, there are 50 women who came forward and that I believe is underreported. I believe it's a lot more than, in fact, I know it's underreported because I know of other first of, of other firsthand accounts that have come to me mm -hmm. that where they like are either still in the business or they just don't want their name associated with that. Um, but, but I, I'm right. It's underreported. I, I think you're right too. Um, I did meet him a couple of times Oh gosh, I think it was like 2010, 2011. He co-owned a sex club here in Portland, a swingers club. And mm -hmm. he did come oh, maybe like every eight, nine months and, and did an appearance there. But uh, it's funny because I never got a good vibe from him and it wasn't, I wasn't interested really in meeting him, at, but it was, you know, it was always this big party thing. And so I wish I knew then what we all know now, or I wish a lot yeah. more people knew, um, not just the women in the industry like yourself. Um, 
So, well, and when it happened to me, there were people in the business who like, like, I know there, there were people at the club that I worked at that had told me he was safe. And then after it happened, they'd say, oh yeah, I heard that happened to Ginger Lynn. And it's like, well, why didn't you tell me that before? You know, why, why did you tell me he was safe to when, if you'd heard that, you know? So it's, that there needs to be some kind of a communication tool in the industry where talent can talk about safety. Right. And I think present day, it's better. Do, do you agree present day? Um, I don't film movies, so I can't say, but I know that I've had people come to me with stories um, that have happened to them on the set um, that were, okay. that, that didn't have to do with informed consent. Like their informed consent was violated. Um, right. And I know that's recent that I've had people come to me with those kind of stories because people come to me with those stories because they know I've been through something like that. Um, right. Yeah. So. Um, well, I, think, I think I think like it, Twitter. I think because media. of the streaming. Yeah, I think because of the streaming, it's better um, because people can work out of their own homes. But once they get into that, um, like shooting video, there's nothing nothing's been put in place to change the grooming or the um i guess trickery that can happen to get you know right talent to do certain things um i mean we can say that it's it i don't know i, I i'm not in it and i i'd like for there to be a way to monitor the industry to see if things are as safe as some people would like to claim right Right. And then I think, too, with um, social media so prominent now, I know personally, uh, randomly, uh, you know, occasionally I'll see models post, hey, I just did a scene or, you know, this person coerced me and promised payment and then kind of puts them on blast. And so I do. I mean, personally, I pay attention to that and I hope other models are, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm it's actually, easier to um, I don't know how much you looked into my website but I'm... back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how much you looked at my website, but I'm um, looking at starting a nonprofit called Sturdy Stairs. And it's a it's a survey website where talent after each scene can take a survey um, at, with questions based on whether or not informed consent was followed from scheduling to payment of the scene. Um, and I'm working on a business plan for that right now. Um, it'll be a nonprofit. Um, and hopefully in the next few months, I'll be I'll be starting to raise money for it. That is a great idea. Yeah. Um, tell us your, tell us the website again. It's sturdystairs.com. Is It's just kind of a placement site right now. Um, but you can see the nine questions that we're, that we're going to ask the talent um, for them to answer after each scene. I love that. I think that's an yeah. awesome thing. Um, yeah. Because I know for me, when I shoot content, and I, you know, my DMs are full. I, I mean, and I'm new at this. I'm three years in, but um, especially before AVN last week, I got tons of DMs. And, you know, I go to their Twitter. I look, who have you worked with? You know, um, mm -hmm. did it look really seedy? Was it a good quality shoot? You know, that kind of thing. And a lot of times I will reach out to someone they've tagged and say, hey, how did you like working with X, Y, and Z? So I think your your website has a lot of value in this industry. Thank I think you. it's going to be amazing. And Thank how you. are you raising funds? Are you doing like a GoFundMe? Uh, how are you going to um, well, approach that? I'm not raising funds yet. Um, one thing I'm going to focus on is advertisements. Um, ab you know, advertisers for the site. You know, like if if you donate so much, you get to advertise your you know production company or what, like, hopefully I'll be getting producers okay. and agents and people, people who would be advertising to talent. Um, so yes. that's, that, that's going to be my main, you know, focus is trying to get advertisers there. Um, and then I was that also thinking about point. maybe going to a university that's close by and seeing if they want to, um, help control the data. Um, if that's something that they would be interested in, we're going to pitch that too. Like maybe to UCLA. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about that. That's great. Um, so one of the questions I had written down after reading your book is, do you still have a relationship with your parents or your adopted parents? Groomer just stuff died in March. My, my, my childhood um, sexual groomer died in March. 
Um, my mother and I do not speak because she was complicit um, after she was told about the abuse that was happening. So no, we don't. Right. My brother and I are very close, especially after writing this book, because he didn't really understand the, the childhood abuse that I went through. Um, my, right. um, to those of you who haven't, read, to those of you who haven't read the book, um, my adoptive mother was going to allow me to be a surrogate, um, against my will, um, for, so her husband, her new husband could have a child. Um, and, and that was, that was a plan that they had through my teenage years. Um, my brother didn't know about it. So now we're, we're really close since he's read the book. He, he was like, I, you tried to tell me, but mm -hmm. I didn't really understand it until I read it in a narrative. So. So the, the books helped with right. my family relationship too. Yeah. And, you know, as I read the book, I got to admit, I didn't see that until you had, you know, your, the mental health um, intervention, which thank God, you know, that helped yeah. see that. But mm -hmm. I mean, even for me, I wasn't familiar with what those signs were. And yeah. uh, as I read that book, I was so thankful for that uh, professional that, was able to see that. Oh, me too. She was, she's my hero. Yeah. She's, she's yeah. my hero for sure. So, and the childhood sexual grooming there, it, it, it definitely reflects a lot of the similarities in the grooming that we can find in the porn industry um, where, you know, you have new <laughs> girls coming in and, you know, there all, all of a sudden there are promises of contracts and, you know, certain things right. and you know, let, let's go to dinner and discuss it and Netflix and chill and, um, and and there, there's a lot of that behavior and a lot of the women who are coming into the industry, women and men have, have, ex, have experienced, um, you know, certain types of grooming in their childhood in some cases. So, so it's easy right. for those groomers in the porn industry to kind of like use the same behavior to coerce. Yes. Yes. Uh, that for sure, because if they're isolating you, you're not going to get any outside feedback from anybody mm -hmm. saying, oh, I don't know about this. And there are a lot of there. There are producers um, out there who, who don't want the talent talking to other talent. Like uh, th there are people out there like that who who will say to new talent, "We don't want you commingling with the, with other talent from other companies." And a lot of that is because they don't want them mm -hmm. finding other work. You know, they want to isolate them. Right. Right. Um. I believe that because I've seen a few times on Twitter in the last probably six months of creators, female creators talking about um, people, men who say they're a studio and they promise payment. And then they are like, well, I'll pick you up at the airport and I'll take you to your hotel. And so like they're totally isolating them. Um mm -hmm. And then they end up either uh, abusing them, not paying them. You know, luckily the girls get away. And so I can definitely well, and see that. Whole, that. Well, I'll pick you up from the airport and take care of you while you're here and while you work. That's exactly what Ron did to me. Yes. I like he was supposed to be my safe guy. And then, you know, he ends up being a perpetrator. He's my transportation. He's my phone. He's my because this was back in the 90s. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have Google Maps. Right. I didn't have like this, like this. If I would have had the same technology today that I, that, or back then that I have today, it never would have happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it, it, I would have been right. able to get away. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then, uh, so how, so what are you doing now? I mean, are you, you're still in, in some shape or form in the adult industry. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, I'm, can I say what streaming company I'm working with? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm on Streammate. I'm on Streammate as Jennifer Steele, triple X. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I love it. I, I just started, um, I just started like a month and a half ago. I, I wasn't really able to do much while I was writing the book because it was so emotional. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like now that I, like my brain's settling and everything, I'm, um, it's, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying doing the backgrounds. I'm enjoying meeting the people I've got regulars now. And I, I, I really like it. I, I'm enjoying this, the whole streaming thing. So I'm glad the industry came up with that. Yeah, it is great. Now, are yeah. you doing only fans like the fan site model at all? No, I don't have an only fans. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Just so not That's for any reason, cool. just, I'm, I, I'm still learning like the, all the new stuff. Right. <laughs> like I, ju I just got my first Twitter account a few months ago and 
Like, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just now getting, in. I, I, I feel like a granny when it comes to the technology. <laughs> That's funny. That's, that is true. Um, well, I am a grandma, so learning yeah. technology is, it's been interesting. Yep. Um, let's see, I was just going to ask you something and it just flew out of my head because your story is just so amazing. Um, Oh, so you, you retired, was it 2006? 2006 was my last, well, my last movie I made was 2009 was the, okay. um, I, I did something for TT Boys Company. My, yeah, like a stepmom thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so between 2009 and 2022, mm -hmm. um, where, what were you doing with your career? Just uh, being a mom, healing? Yeah, just being a mom, I got um, family stuff, like mostly focusing on my family. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, uh, writing, a lot of writing. <laughs> that I mean, re really, that's what's, what took up most of my time was just learning how right. to write and just getting stuff out through writing. That is, yeah. yeah. And I'm right, like writing and family. <laughs> And like you said, it was very emotional to really dive and get the details of that story. Yeah. Um, and so are you still in Florida? Yeah. Is that I, where you I live in Tampa, Tampa Bay. I love it here. Yeah, I love Florida too. In fact, Tampa is one of my favorites. Tampa and Daytona. Yeah. So um how are you, so have you had other models reach out to you then since your book came out? Yeah, How's life I have. different since the book um, came out? I've had other models reach out to me since my book came out to tell me that they were also raped by Ron Jeremy. Um, okay. And these are, these are like the young current in their twenties. Like this is like, you know, over the last like not that long ago. So, I mean, this, okay. he was still doing this with industry girls like recently. Um, and then, I, and then those same girls also told me about other um, people in the industry who did certain things to them. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and that's like, honestly, that's one of my favorite parts of like me writing this is that mm -hmm. people do have a person that they can feel comfortable with coming to and I'll believe them. You know, because a lot of times right. they'll tell the story to somebody and they, you know, they either think they're trying to cause problems or, you know, like it's, it's, they, they know that there's somebody who's going to believe them. Right. Right. So. Yeah. I am sad. Um, so the recent events of last week, um, you know, came out that Ron is not going to go to trial, that right. he's not competent enough to do that. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Jennifer? Um, I'm actually okay with it. I, I've found peace with it. Um, my main thing was that so many women came out and it's public that this happened. Um, mm -hmm. I don't need a guilty verdict to know that he is guilty. Um, right. it's, it's sad that there are going to be so many fans that are going to be claiming to the victims innocent until proven guilty, you know, so he's mm -hmm. not guilty. So, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the victims are, are going to have to go through that. And that sucks. Um, but dimensions, dementia is not a free pass. That's like, no. I, I wouldn't wish dementia on anyone. I mean, that's a, that is a horrible thing for someone to come, right. To come to terms with. And, and that's like, he's now going to have to come, his ego is now crushed and he's now going to have to come to terms with himself. And I right. think, I, I think dementia being thrown at him by life was, you know, I, I don't really see this as he's getting a free pass or he's getting off like scot free or I, I don't see it that way. I see it that karma got ahead of him before the legal system did. And and that's I was just gonna say it. karma. Yeah. Yeah. Not not that dementia means you have bad karma, but like right. in, the, in right. this case, I feel like um what whatever's happening to his brain is like he's he's going through what he needs to go through. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And, yeah. and so I, I, I feel is like really in that good. sense, justice has been served. Um, but a, as I said, it's, it's the way the community is, is going to deal with it. That is more, I think the concern here than anything. Right. Right. Yeah. It very interesting. Um, and how I that feel like more, I feel like more the industry got off scot-free. 
I think you're right. You know, and as I read your book, yeah, I thought about that and how selfish the industry was by not believing it or, or I, I think they believed I it. I think they believed they it and it was too messy for them to do anything about it. Just, exactly. Like, just like my complicit we, mom. <laughs> it's like, we believe you. We know it's happening. We just don't want to get in the middle of it, you know? And so um, that I think is what is sad. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. It's well, the, the, and, and it's not, it's not just this industry, but um, you know, other industries too, it's, we wait until the law takes care of rape before we call somebody a rapist. But the reality is, is rape is the hardest thing to prove. You, you can't, you can't prove it. It's, it's, he said, he said, she said, no, no matter what, I mean, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing to prove. So when people wait, for someone to get a guilty verdict before they throw them out of their industry or stop working with them mm-hmm. or stop using them or whatever, you're basically letting a rapist run free. <laughs> when, right. when you have like when you have so many people coming forward, and there were a lot of people who came forward over the years, and they just got ignored. And it's you know right, right there, it's like it, you know we all have our own personal responsibility. And if you're if you're an agent who's booking someone who like a dozen people have said was a rapist. Why are you booking that person? You know, that's the, at that point, you know, you've got to say, Hey, I have some power here and I should be socially responsible and stop booking this person. If he's raping my other clients. (laughs) Right. Cause that was, that's the thing is like, you have agents like booking a rapist Mm -hmm. and like the victims are the clients. Like (laughs) it it didn't make sense. (laughs) No, it doesn't make sense. Um, I was really excited. Um, do you about your relationship with Amberlyn? Are you guys still friends, yeah. and is she still yes. a good support for you? Yeah, she's uh, she's she's my older sister. She's my she's my sponsor. She's my best friend. She's um, in, in many ways she takes on a mother role with me, um, and mm-hmm. she's she's amazing. She was the first she was the first person who had a voice who had like strength, like the, in, in the industry that, that heard my story and looked at me and said, I believe you and something needs to be I done. Know, about I have goosebumps right now thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. And she, she tried, she tried to, she tried to talk to people that had power and it was just like, there was just nothing to be done. So. Right. Right. Yeah. What, um, I was so impressed with how independent she was, you know, and mm-hmm. d- just didn't take shit from anybody. She's amazing. She really is. I've been trying to get her on my show. I'm working with her manager to get her on. Um, oh, I'll put a good word in. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> um, and so did you attend the recent AVN or are you out of that? You don't go to those, don't do appearances anymore. Well, I, I was thinking about doing AVM, but I didn't just because I, I want to get, well, I started doing all my streaming and I was like, I was getting really into it and I didn't want to stop my motivate because I'm getting into like, I don't know how long you've been doing it before, but, but, but you know how you get into kind of a, um, a flow. Like I was, I yes. was starting to learn my flow and then I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to go to AVN. I'm just going to like, keep, you know, working on my flow. And, um, right. and then plus I'm working on the, I'm, I'm working on the sturdy stairs thing. Um, yes. so like, you know, I've, I've got the business plan that I'm working on now. And so like, if I went to AVN now, yeah, I could promote my book, but like, I've, I've got other things that are, I feel like are more important that, you know, that I'm doing. <laughs> I get that. You know, I've next been, I've been streaming next year. I've been doing it three years. And my thing is when I travel, I don't make money. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing is I could go there and spend a bunch of money and not make money, you know? So yeah. yeah. But, but now I next travel, year I'll have more purpose to go. Yeah. yeah, I just I can't get online when I travel because a the internet sucks no matter where I go. Vegas has the worst internet in the world, I think. Um, I th- I just have it, it. I think it has to do with all the lights and electricity, but can't stream. But yes, anytime I travel, I make the least amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so. Uh, do you think that once you get your flow into streaming, um, and Streammate's a great, great platform that I'm there. I love it there. I love um, it. What I like is it's all private shows, so that's mm-hmm. nice. Like yeah. to see anything, they got to be paying you. Um, but do you think you'll branch out and do maybe fan sites or clip sites or anything like that? 
I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time. <laughs> That's cool. That's so cool. I, I may, well, may not have- yeah, I like like sturdy the sturdy stairs is like my big that's what I'm really concentrating on. Um, you know, Perfect. stream is great for my like making money like, you know, right now and um yeah. But but as far as like branching out as a porn star and you know, creating and and like building content and all that, I don't know how much mm-hmm. of that I want to get into. I like right. the per- I like the personal um I like the personal thing of the streaming where it's just like you and another person. Um, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's more about the personality. Um, right. I've noticed with, with stream mate, um, cause you're talking to the person you're getting to know them like while you're interacting sexually. Um, mm-hmm. but like when you're, when you're filming content, it's like, you're, you're interacting with a camera <laughs> and yeah. it's just not the same. So right. Um, right. I'm kind of just doing the things that I enjoy doing. And right now it's streaming. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And you deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so tell me about pineapple support. I know that in 2019, um, you you wrote that you became engaged with them and got yeah. some therapy. Yeah. Uh, it just seems to me like they would be a great sponsor for your website. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to talk to them too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've, um, Leah, Leah and I have been talking a little bit. So, and I, like, once I get a good, good business plan, I'm going to hit them with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they, they were, they, they were great. Um, after Ron got arrested, it like pretty much ripped off the band aid for a lot of people. Um, right. and they, they had, I, I can say that they had more than one Ron Jeremy victim, um, that they took care of. Like, oh, in know. fact, if I was in a trauma group and it came out of like, there were a few people <laughs> that, wow. that, that were in there because of one person, you know? So, wow. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah I, I also know of another model that, because that, I was, um, um, it, it, I was, I was in bad shape when, it, you know, I mean, it's like, you'd think like, oh, when, when your rapist gets arrested that you're going to be like happy, but what it does is it just brings back all this, all the crap that you got over, you know? So, um, it was, yeah, it was a lot. It was, it was a big couple of years. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, I'm really glad that things are looking up. Things mm-hmm. are settling. Um, and like you said, uh, finding some peace, writing your book, getting your story out there. Um, I will admit your story was the first written story I had read um, about you know, him and his actions. And so it really hit home. I I can't say that I slept after I finished the book. It was so profound. Thank you. And, um, yeah, it really woke me up. I've got to tell you, it really touched me. Um, so going forward, um, your book is out on Amazon. I want people to know where to find it. Um, I will post links to it also when this podcast goes live. It's also on Audible now. Yeah. yeah I, you know, a, I wish I... There's an audio book. I do all the voices. And with Ron's voice, I just pinched my nose. And then I was Ron Jeremy. <laughs> I love that's it. My, that's my Ron Jeremy voice. <laughs> that is awesome. And then do you... Um, you're on Streammate as uh, Jennifer Steele XXX, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And what is your Twitter? Um, my Twitter is porn writer, Jen. Okay. I want to make sure we can, uh, get a link to that. Do you have Instagram? Um, Instagram is the real Jennifer Steele. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, any last closing thoughts that you'd like to tell our viewers, uh, about, um, your story, your book, anything like that, Jennifer? No, just um, here. Th- this is the cover, like to look at it if you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great book. Yeah, thank you. I think everybody should read it. it thank it, you for reading it. There are so many um, twists and turns in there, and you've had quite a life, and so I really commend you. Well, thanks for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I've loved talking to you and I'll look forward to uh, our new friendship and 
Yeah, you, you too. You I look forward to seeing you at the conventions coming up. Because <laughs> yes. I, I will be popping up at some of them. So <laughs> I think the next one for me is X Biz Miami. Oh, okay. There's wh when is that? Uh, May. So May okay. like 15th to the 18th, I think. I will probably show up to that since it's in Miami. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. I had a good time. All right.